Yeah, turn up a little bit. First Timothy chapter number six and verse number one. And when you get that, say amen. amen. I appreciate I, I appreciate this message. Um, I think Wednesday of uh, and, and I love it, and I never preached this message before. And when the Lord gave me this message for the first time, I ever preached it. And now the Lord said, well, it's good for love. It's going to be good for here. So this will be my second time preaching the effort. Uh, but first, turn up some more. I don't think it's going to be Yeah, turn up a little more. Uh, first Timothy chapter number six. They're going to help us and help me. And I they help the church there. I love it. I pray to help us uh, here. First Timothy chapter number six and verse number one. Y'all just say amen. 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 The Bible said, you got the number one? The Bible said, uh, in first Timothy chapter number six and verse number one. The Bible said, as many servants... All right, it's under their yoke, count their own master, word of all honor, uh, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemous. And the Bible also said, they that have believed in master, let them not despise them, but because they are brother, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of their what? Mm -hmm. Benefit. And the Bible said, these things teach and exalt. If any man teach otherwise, consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, it was an adoption of the court to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doubting about courses and strife of words where it come in envy, strife, rather than this evil surmising. Perverse the spirit of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdrawal that way. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing to this world. It is certain we can carry it in what? And having food and rain for us be done with content. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts, with drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of what? All evil, which while the psalm come after, they have earned from their faith and pierced themselves through with many what? Verse 5, 12. A fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, whereto thou also called, and have professed a good profession before what? Many witness. And so the time I mentioned some things that would hinder us from fully getting involved in missions. Some things that would hinder us from fully getting involved in missions. Y'all can have a seat. Is it made on bad? It's on sound right now. Is it on what? It's on sound like this. Really up there. I, I hear the standing. Yeah, I hear the standing, but it seems like it's just not up much. We're going to pray. Father God, we ask you to bless this uh, message tonight. We ask you to use me in a mighty way, God. We ask you to uh, come to this place tonight, Lord Jesus, and show up and show out. We, we ask you, Holy Ghost of God, that the power of God will rest upon me as I preach the word of God. We ask you, Spirit of God, to go down every aisle, go down every road, and, and minister our hearts as we are in the service tonight. We ask you to help us to realize some things in our life that will hinder us from fully getting involved in mission. We ask you to bless now. We ask you to work now. We ask you to get all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. So here in the book of First Timothy here, and it's just, I don't know what's something wrong with ourselves, but I just, it seems like I ain't getting that feedback like I normally get when I'm put over by the time. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we see here Paul is writing to, the, uh, uh, to Timothy here, and Timothy was a young preacher, and Paul trained Timothy in the ministry. And the word Timothy, like we, we have in his book on Wednesday, means honoring God. So names have a lot of meaning to it, and his name means honoring God. So now Timothy had came to be a young man, and Timothy was pastoring a church in the city of Ephesus, which is the book of Ephesians. And Paul was writing to Timothy and began to tell him how a, a, a church should be operated. And so you want to know uh, about the church, and you can learn a lot by reading 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, and Titus. And so Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, and you get to chapter number one, Paul began to tell Timothy how he glad that God had been able him, counted him faithful, and put him to the ministry. And Paul began to tell him how Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners who are the chief. And Paul began to tell Timothy how that God, when God called a man, God enabled a man, and God gave a man power, that a man is called by God, not a man volunteered to be a pastor. We got too many people today are volunteering being pastor. Paul said that God called him and God put him to the what? Ministry. He didn't put himself in the ministry. And a lot of people get in ministry and they think the ministry is all loving and loving. They believe that the ministry is all good. And they won't get a pastor. Not because God put him in the ministry. They won't get in the ministry so they can get a good living. Say amen. Amen. 
And some people look at me about time. I've been pastoring a lot of time. Boy, it's good. I want to be, uh, I like to do that. Well, it's, it seems like it's all good. But when you start going through heartaches, you start going through the pains, you start going through a lot of hurt. And boy, you're like, man, you know, what did I get myself into? And Paul is right to Timothy and begin to tell him, chapter number one, how did God put Paul in the ministry? How Christ Jesus came into the world to say what? Set us. Then you go to chapter number two, Paul began to tell us to pray for those in authority. He said, pray for those, pray for the kings, pray for all those in authority. And today we have a lot of people talking about the authority and saying, pray for authority. And Paul told Timothy to pray. He said, when you pray for those in authority, you'll be able to have peace. With all men. The reason why we have a lot of chaos today is because a lot of people ain't praying for those in authority. They ain't praying for Trump. They ain't praying for those in the, in the, in the position, the vice president. They ain't praying for Eric Simmons. They ain't praying for Phil Bryant. I'm going to tell you, some people don't know who the government recipient is. Some people don't even know who the government is. They don't understand. And they because we don't pray for those in authority. And that's why we have chaos. Because when you pray for people, it softens your heart for people. And Paul told Timothy in chapter number two, pray for those in authority. Then Paul told Timothy in chapter number two that at least at this, he said it's good, but he basically what he's saying that a woman should not assault authority over the man, but to be in silence. Hey, today we got a lot of women want to be men, right. and we have women that want to be over the man. But Paul told Timothy that a woman should not assault authority over the man. And what that means that a woman should not have a, a position that she tell a man what to do. But today, more women want to tell men what to do. It's right. But Paul told Timothy that's how that should be in chapter number two. He said, "Because Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived in the transgression." So Paul began to tell Timothy this. Here in verse chapter number three, we read, we learned that Paul was teaching Timothy who can, who can be a what pastor. That's chapter number three. He said, oh, "My husband, he must be a husband of one wife. He must be vigilant. He must be sober. He must be uh, apt to teach." And so, so Paul began to tell Timothy who can be a pastor. Then we learned just a few weeks ago, Paul told Timothy who can be a what? Deacon. So chapter number three talking about who can be a pastor, who can be a deacon. Chapter number four, he said it'll be a time where people have doctrine of devils. How do we preach the false doctrine? Don't we got that going on today? A lot of false doctrine, a lot of churches on TV, a lot of churches on every corner, and they preach the doctrine of devils. They teach the people you gotta get have a good heart to go to heaven. They teach the people you gotta get baptized to go to heaven. They teach the people that you gotta be good to go to heaven. Hey, there are doctrine of devils. Then you get to chapter number five. You get to chapter number five. Now Paul is telling Timothy how the church should take care of the man of God. Right. Hey, he said that an ox. He said an ox that treat out the corn. He used that example. He said an ox. Treat out the corn. He said, a man of God should bear it. He feed the people of God, and the people of God should feed him physically. Today, some people think the pastor should starve to death. That God will take care of him. God will bring food from heaven. God never done it. God don't bring money from heaven. God used the people of God to take care of the men of God. That's chapter number five of Timothy. And Paul told Timothy, hey, it's the church job, Timothy. If you feed them physically, they should feed you spiritually. I'm going to tell you, they go to chapter number six, and this is where we are tonight. Now Paul tells Timothy, he said, let his many servants are under the yoke, count their own master worthy of all honor. Today we got a lot of people that don't respect their boss today. And they start off with their little kids. See, this authority issue, it starts with the young. See, I, I, I wasn't born grown, you weren't born grown. It starts young, a uh, disrespect for the authority. And so when they get older, they want to be an authority. They don't want to listen to their boss. And that's why some people can't keep a job as long as John stayed in the army. Because they, they won't tell their boss what to do when they get fired from every job. See? And the Bible tells them that we should be submissive to authority. He said, even, though you're, uh, even if your boss, a boss is a Christian, you should submit to him. Why? Because God placed him in a position of authority. So you don't submit to him. You submit to God. Because God told you to submit to him. And Paul began to tell him, how did you submit to those authority? We have an authority issue today. And that was the society's chaos. People want to protest, protest for every corner. Can I? They hate authority. And then Paul comes to chapter number six and verse number four. A little bit by the shade here, y'all. This is going to get you. He said, He is proud, knowing nothing, but down about questions and strife of words, where I'm coming in and strife and evil surmising. And I look at the Bible said, Perverse the spirit of man to corrupt minds, 
This is true of the truth. Supposing that gain is godless. For self control that one. Listen to check this out. So Paul said we were living in a time. Yes. And we live in an era. Where people think that gain is what? Godless. You ever met some people. Man God bless with a nice heart. House. Man God bless with a nice heart. I must be doing something right. I got a nice house. I got nice cars. I must be doing something right. If I wasn't doing this right, why would God what? Bless me. They say that gain is what? Godliness. They say, well, because I got to do stuff. That means I got to be right with God. Well, no, I ain't got more stuff than all of us. He ain't right with God. Hallelujah. He know he about to bust hell wide open. Hey, Jay-Z and Beyonce got more money than all of us, but they about the best bust hell wide open. They got houses and cars, real estate and all that, but they about to go to hell. Hey, hey, have a thing for me that you ride with God. Right. And God just died. He did what they hit. Hell, he's in whatever his name. Yeah, he hurt her. He had whatever his name, Playboy. Had Playboy magazine. And he left forty three million dollars behind. Forty three million. He, listen, I don't know if he's saved or not. I don't know. I don't know if he got saved when he died, so I don't know. If he didn't get saved, what the hell? But his whole life, he used women to make a lot of money. He had playboy matches, bill matches. Hey, God ain't blessed that man with that money. But today we live in a society where people say you got money, that means God has blessed you. A lot of times the devil will bless you, amen. Yeah. The Bible says, suppose that gain is what? Godliness. Don't we live in society? I got a lot of stuff. I must be right with God. Huh? Paul said it's not true. Because you got gain, that don't mean you're godless. He said verse number six. He said, but godliness with contentment is great what? Gain. He said, when you're content, then you got great gain. I said it this morning, I'm going to say it today. Every time you write something, I want something new. I want this, I want that. Paul said, I mean, Paul said, Content me, brother. That's real gain when you content. I, I, that's something for y'all, right? y'all young kids. Y'all content with the clothes y'all got. I right, content to shoot. Some of y'all want more and more and more. You want more and more and more. You just ain't good. You want more and more and more. It ain't enough, ain't it? Heaven want more and more and more. It ain't never enough, ain't it? You just want more and more and more. You ain't content. Most of the average person, the average person's society, they ain't not content tonight. They want more. They want more. They want more. But by Paul said, gain. Uh, continue with uh, but God will continue his great work. So, little society, what Joe Olsen tell you that you got money, you rich. You got TD Jakes, there in Houston, where down in Texas, you got money, you okay. Hey, you got all these preachers on TV that tell you that if you ain't got no money, that you ain't right with God. Right. Amen. You got all these preachers on TV saying if you ain't got no money, that means you ain't giving enough. Right. I believe the time I'm in the mission. But it, it, the Bible says we poor always. Uh -huh. And so when they tell you, Brother Harris, if he ain't if he ain't rich, if he ain't right with God, and that's cut up TV saw a seed. Send your money to them and send five hundred thousand dollars. Hey, hey, listen, tell me you can gain all you want to. That don't mean God is in it, bro. Amen. Amen. I tell people all the time, I told people love it. It's wrong to those rich. That did God bless them? Mm -hmm. Huh? Who have never heard of the name? He filled, he left four to three million dollars. God, you think God gonna bless a man that uses women to sell their bodies? Mm -hmm. No, man. But he had four to three million dollars left behind. Big mention. And so I'm gonna tell you that the devil will deceive you. He'll try to deceive you. He'll try to deceive me. And tell us the more we have, the more blessed we are. Amen. He'll tell you that. Huh? <laughs> Then you take the less you have, the less fortune you are. You know, you're there with some, some people less fortunate. Yes. Huh? He said, well, you ain't got much. Look at your life. Why are you living for it? You ain't hardly got nothing. Mm -hmm. Look at your, your life. Don't mean nothing. You ain't got no money. Look at your friends. They got more. Look at your family. They got more. Look at your foes. They got more. Look at the people around you. Well, they got more than they seem happy. Have you ever been on Facebook? It seems like everybody has more Facebook. Right. It seems like everybody in the world got something new. It seems like they live in a lot of land. But the reality is this that the Bible says but that God is going to right. Because you got that money, it doesn't bring godliness. Amen. We live in a society that's messed up, y'all, tonight. We live in a society tonight that have changed uh, who God is and put God as man. And they, they have messed us up. And so tonight we've been talking about mission for the whole month. Now we're not talking about talk mission this month. Amen. And then tonight. It's a thing I see these verses here, Jim. 
that will hinder you and I from fully getting involved in missions. What I'm saying tonight, if you don't be careful, these things I'm about to talk to you tonight about will be the very things that will stop you from getting involved in worldwide missions. Right. Even y'all young people, y'all start early getting involved in missions. You don't want you to get older to get involved. You want to start early. Truth number one is this, y'all. Y'all probably don't like this one. Truth number one is this. We say things that we hinder a person from getting fully involved in worldwide missions. Truth number one is this. When a Christian, listen close now, when a Christian love their money more than they love their God, it will hinder them from fully getting involved in missions. We live in a society where people love money. Can I get an amen about that? We got to be real. Like, if there's anything and everything for money, you said, Pastor, show this. Go to verse number 6 through 10 here. I'm about to show y'all something. Look what the Bible said in verse 6. He said, But God is with contention is great what? For we brought nothing to this world, and it's certain to carry nothing what? Let's stop there. Look here, you know how I came to the world? I came to the world naked. Now, for real, I did ain't that. I was mean, born, I didn't have no clothes on. I ain't, have, I ain't, on, I ain't on a spoon when I came to this world. I, I, I ain't on a t shirt when I came to this world. I, I ain't have a pen when I came to this world. And when you came to this world, you came naked too. I, I'm going to tell you what a person died, and I preached that funeral. We go to the graveyard, and I said, Ash and ashes, dust to dust. You came from the dust. Nathaniel, he got caught. <laughs> this is 
been watching for years, Ted. Look at him. Hey, hey, they took everybody from him. What caused that man to do that? Look at what the Bible says in verse number eight. It said, having food and raiment, as there would be what? Content. I got a question. How many people y'all want to content with food and clothes? How many? It's not many. No. That's right, but ain't mean I ain't met too many. God says, with food and rape, that would be that we're content. Yeah. But that, especially these poor kids we got today, they want everything they can see. Mm -hmm. And they don't get it, they get mad at you. Somebody, Amen. you can't give them enough. You buy a pair of shoes then, we want some more shoes two weeks from now. You buy a shoes then, three weeks from now, one month from now, a new pair come out, they want that. Every time something new, they want something, they want, it's not right. I'm going to tell you this. God said, hey, hey, be content with food and rape. We're hard to find that. Mm -hmm. Ain't say, ain't say. He's like, you content with food and right Amen. Now let's go on down verse number nine. The Bible said, but they that would be rich fall into temptation and snicker and to men and foolish and what? Hurt from us would drown them in the description of what? Do you know what people want when you want money? I'm telling you, so can I help y'all tonight? Y'all okay, can watch it now. You look at that money, you start doing some foolish stuff for it. How you think he used to have to wear everything? Got that women to be in that playboy house, man. He promised wealth. He promised fame. And they sold their body to get famous. You know how many people do anything to get famous? They'll sell, they'll sign their soul onto the devil. Hey, they'll give their whole soul to the devil to be rich. They'll kill to get rich. They'll sell their body to get rich. They'll do better still kill and pay to get rich. You know how many people kill their spouse and get rich in Colombia? You know how many people kill their parents and get their parents inheritance that they were leaving for them? You know how many young girls grew up innocent like you and by the time they got about 20, one of them the playboy next day? <coughs> Why? They, they, want, they want some money. Hey, hey, they want that money before they know you start making some foolish decisions. And if I say a cause to be high, it hurts you. Yeah. Jay-Z and so and so the devil going to hell. Lil Wayne and so and so the devil going to hell. Y'all listen for them. They going to hell. And they sold their soul to the devil. And the devil said, you give me your soul, I give you fame. Right. I give you wealth. And they said, okay, I'm going to give you your blood sacrifice to get rich. That was Lil Wayne did. That was Beyonce did. Y'all about to say, all the fame, they going to hell. They sold their soul to the devil so they can be rich. They can be famous. And they really not going to hell. They can get rich. They'd rather go to hell than tell you. Just to be rich harder. That is crazy. And you don't think it's crazy. The Bible says, but they that be rich fall into temptation and they snare into many foolish and what? Hurtful lust. You know how many people hurt themselves because they want their money? Please. Many, bro. See, you know how many people in jail tonight? All because they tried to get hit, man, and got caught. Hallelujah. Hey, y'all, look at tonight. You know how many people tonight in wheelchairs? Can they turn to rock somebody? And they got their brain brain rolled out. I'm going to tell you, I had a cousin 12 years ago when trying to bring us out of house. And they hit him across the head. And with a gun, and he died in jail. My cousin went to bring that full house, man. And that man came and knocked across the head with that gun and killed him. He told the police his head was hurting, but they ain't believe him. And get what happened? He died in jail to him, trying to rob that man and get some money. See, get some money. Now you're going to die. It'll cause you hurtful lust. Can you begin to make some wrong decisions? And it'll cause you some. It'll cause you some hurt. You know, I, you know, I was in jail for three years. Got my love money, and I was hurt every day. It caused me some hurt, and I had my money on my mind. I had my mind on my money, and it caused me a lot of hurt. Amen. Money trying to get money caused me a lot of hurt. Y'all ain't got to believe me, man. Ain't got to believe me. I grew up just like you. Never had a bad day. My name is Chubby. 
I was about to catch a gun, it don't happen to me. Right. Yeah, God's okay, I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> Let's go to verse 17, y'all. Yeah. Are y'all with me tonight? Yeah. I'm sorry, the Bible said, uh, men are foolish and hurtful us with drown men and destruction what? Perdition. I look at the word for, uh, uh, to drown and to plunge into the deep, to seek. I mean, you know, when you start loving one thing, you know what happens? Their lives are going down. Sometimes the devil tells us, the more money you have, the more happy you'll be. He said, the more money you have, you'll be happy. You won't have no problems. Everything will go good. Hey, that's a lie. Why do a lot of rich people kill themselves? Why do a lot of rich people have to do drugs? Why do a lot of rich people get divorced? And money brought joy. And money brought peace. They won't be on drugs. Get high with that, get divorced. But the devil tells us the more money you have, you have to have no problems. Some people say, I got a lot of problems, but money ain't one of them they boast about it. Yeah. I got a lot of problems, but money ain't one of them. Listen to me now. The devil tells you the more money you have, the happier you'll be. But it's the other way around. The more money you have, the more miserable you are. I don't know if y'all watch, so I watch show people that won the lottery. I see some on Yahoo. I made it more of all this money. I used to watch a show when I had cable. Had they had a show about people went to learn and why they out today. And you were real about it. Every one of them had the same exact income with him. And get what they had to come That money made their life more complicated. That money made their life more miserable. Their money brought more enemies. The old song about the uh, uh, Tory big. more money, more what? Problems. Problems. Hey, but they'll tell you the more money, less problems. But uh, the biblical says that the more you get, if you don't have Jesus, the more miserable you are. How many times in I we need to come to a conclusion when a Christian love their money more than they love God, it will hinder them from fully getting involved in missions. Right. We don't got a small crowd tonight. Can I be real? I don't care what y'all say to me. Pastor, we don't have a lot of money. I'm going to show you something. Go to chapter 10. Look at the Bible saying verse 10. For the love of money is the root of what? Oh, How much money? It good look money. It don't matter. That's right, brother. He said for the love of money, it ain't how much. So some of you say, man, I ain't got a lot. You love the little bit you do have, brother. I said in love, I'm going to say it again. Hey, rich people have their money in their mind. They go to work. They go wake up with their money in their mind. So I bet they didn't have money in mind. When they go to bed, they have money in mind. And they have the money in mind that they, they have the money on their mind that they do have. Mm -hmm. The poor people this. They wake up thinking about money. But they think about money. And they go to bed about money. But they ain't thinking about the money they have. They think about the money they wish they had. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, hey, some of y'all don't be thinking about how you can find a suitcase on the side of the road. <laughs> how you wish that you can find a suitcase full of money. You think about all over the bed. You think about how can I get rich? How can I get more money? How can I get more? And you know, you wake up thinking about it. Go out the day you think about it. You go to bed and think about it. Some of y'all won't be famous. So you get rich. Listen to me now. From the love of money, it's the root of all evil. You know how I many people that kill people for money? Amen. Men, hit men. So I give you 20, 20 stacks. Take them out. So now the people all around with a heat on that got a, got a heat on that right there on the door. And they can make people kill you for a couple of dollars. Right. Hey, how many times tonight for the love of money? It's the root of all evil. And you tell, and you look at all the crimes, majority of the crimes, majority of the murder, majority of the fight, majority of the divorce, it comes because of money. Right. It does. For the love of money. It's the root of all what? Evil. I'm in jail now. Right now, if I go on the streets right now, now if I go on the streets, I can be the house of this kid woman to me. She got a good job up, nice home. And I get to know if she know I got money. She does, she does, she does start talking to me so I can help pay her bills. Right. <laughs> you know how many women right. will sell their bodies? I mean by that, they are mixed up. They are the hip over the mask like they can help pay the bills. Amen. Yeah. Right. And I'm right. Amen. For the love of money. For the love of money. See, that's we got a love problem. And the Bible said the love of money. It's the root. It's for all of us. They come from the root of the, the bottom part of life. And the bottom part of our heart. For the love of money. It's the root of all evil. Yes. I don't know 
some of y'all have been smacked on drugs or shit. But when a person crack or any type of heavy drugs, when they don't got the money, they'll steal for it. They'll steal for their mama, grandma, they'll steal for their wife, they'll kill everybody. They don't care who it is. Don't care who it is, they're right. When a man get broke, I'm saying this to me, when a man get broke, they used to have the money. Get that man to do how be. He'll go around trying to rob and get more money. And he used to have the money. Are y'all with me today? Hey, y'all, hey, young people, don't get caught up in the trick bag. Got that sin. Gonna promise some stuff. But that sin gonna kill you. That sin gonna destroy you. Don't let that devil fool you tonight. Amen. I told you I had money. That's all y'all gotta do. That's y'all for them that know me. I had money. And I did anything for it to tell you. Whatever. She dies, sell drugs, deal with counterfeit money, rob. What am I going to do? I did because I love money. And the Bible says the love of money is the will of what? So when a person, when a Christian loves money more than love God, what are they going to do? They don't get much money submissions. Are y'all with me? When a person loves money more than love God, they never get more money submissions. Why? They, they, they get their identity is found in how much money they got in their pockets. Mm -hmm. Their identity is just happening. They found out how much money happened in the bank. Mm -hmm. So he said, if I give to God, I don't have as much. You know what a man told me? This is true, right? Man. He got a 10,000 square foot house. His wife told me, right? He said, if he had less than $100,000 in the bank, he feel like he broke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He said, if he had less than 100000 in the bank, his wife said, get nervous. I was here. Well, that's some good money. He didn't know it was Why? Because he loved his money. His money is our identity. His money is his God. His money is his power. He worship that money. What did he worship God? Amen. Then what? That man don't even get no tithes. He don't pay right to him. Pastor, he don't pay no tithes at church. They go to church. He don't pay no tithes. He don't pay no tithes. That's his mind on his mind, his mind on his money. And he did one time he gave the church six, seven thousand dollars. wife told me he regretted that he did that. He wanted to go get it back. Wow. Love that money. And it's all around us. And I'm telling you, this is all in hell age. Hell age. They get older and they love their money. I'm going to tell y'all, girls, y'all maybe care how much you love money. You got to take it somewhere that you don't want to go. Right. You'll be in a you'll be in a small house, you never thought you'd be there. And then, hey, listen to me. Hey, you remember that young girl that got killed in Chicago? You'll be in a wrong car. Hey, you, hey, I know a young lady here. She she got in a car with the wrong person, she almost got raped. Yes. Yeah, that, this is what I'm saying. Because she wants somebody to pay her cell phone all the time. She wants somebody to do pay her bills. I'm going to get her money. That man said, I'm keep I'm keeping your money. He don't give another man and try to rape her. Why? I'm gonna tell you, people begin to make some bad decisions. They make bad decisions. They make bad decisions because they love money. Amen. Amen. Is that right? Amen. The love of money is the root of what? Love. Oh. the Bible says, verse 10. He ain't said money. Now, we need some money to eat now. Praise God for that. You need money. God said, for the money is the root of what? Love. God said, for the what? Love. God said, for the what? 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 God said, and he, so he didn't say money was wrong. He said the love of money was wrong. Not money is stuff. The Bible says, verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. Why? For some covered out there, they have earned from the what? Faith. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Then what happened? Christian now. They start. They bought somebody might like, bless Ask me, they get a pay raise. Mm -hmm. So now, the Bible is up to you to pay raise, but that pay raise is going to church on Sunday for Right. Amen. They said, we'll move you up to the high position, but you got to work every Sunday. Uh -huh. They come up to the church and say, well, I've been praying for the anyways, they got you from God. Hey, God, when they give you a job, they're going to take his place. They're going to take his day. But a lot of people would get that raise and they it's from God and the devil tempt them and they fell for the okie dokie. I'm going to tell you, people make some bad Yeah, quit church with that money. Mm -hmm. You won't see them no more. Mm -hmm. I don't pray for people to get jobs, man. That, no, I don't see them no more. That's true. Listen, can the jobs start overpowering them? They start missing church. 
They want their money. So they know they tell me, that's how I got to pay my bills off. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Man, I, man, I got to pay my bills off. God understand. Right. Hey, God, don't understand.
God bless you, amen. amen. The Bible said, fight the good fight of what? Lay hold of eternal life. Word to thou also call. And have professed a good profession before many what? He said, fight the good fight of faith. Why would Paul tell Timothy to fight the good fight of faith? Right. Every day of our life, the world, the flesh, and the devil is just a war of our faith. Right. He's trying to doubt God. He was, the devil wants to doubt the what? Word of God. Yeah. He wants to doubt the what? Promise of God. And, the, and Paul told Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. If the devil can get your faith, he got you. Right. Hey, if the devil can get your faith, he got me. How do you say the devil is out of faith? He wants to doubt God. He don't want to trust God. He don't want to stand on God's promises. He don't want to trust God's word. I'm going to tell you, trust in Jesus. I've never seen a righteous forsake. Amen. No, I see a seed breaking bread. Jesus is a good provider. Jesus on the count of a thousand years. In a thousand years. The world is his. In the full of death. Your God. Slogan I like to use all the time. Everybody that's been saved trust God with their soul. Right, right or wrong. Amen. But they won't trust me in finance. That's crazy. I'm going to trust God to take me to heaven, a place I've never seen before, mm -hmm. something I've never read about. I'm going to trust Him to take me to heaven, but I ain't going to trust Him with what I see. Right. The Bible said the church should live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you trust God with your soul, why would you not trust with your finances? Amen. The average person, I mean the Christian, we talk about, does not trust God with their finances. They feel like they can do a better job than God. And that's why it's always chaos in finances. Amen. Huh? A lot of people start making bad decisions because they have a lack of what? Faith. So the Bible tells us fight a good fight of what? Faith. And the devil's out of our faith, y'all, tonight. I'm going to tell you tonight, y'all, if the devil gets your faith, he got what? Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you tonight, church. We got to come to a point that we can't walk by sight, we got to walk by what? Faith. We can't live by sight, we got to live by what? Faith. Faith is a substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. So I believe God. I trust His word. If God said it, that's enough for me. God cannot lie. He never lied. He always keeps His promises. I have failed God, but God has never failed me. Amen. God is faithful, y'all. God is faithful. Y'all remember that? Amen. I'm going to tell you, God is faithful. How come I found God to be faithful in the four years? I found God to be real faithful in the last four years. I'm not really in the last four years. How I found God to be faithful in since that day. We have seen the hand of God. Amen. We have seen God keep his promise. We have seen God keep his word. I'm going to tell you, David is shed. I've been wrong. And now I'm old. Never seen the rights forsaken. No, you see that, Brandon. Amen. Look, let's go to verse number 17, y'all. 18, we'll be done. Now, I'm sorry, we got one more verse out there. Well, verse 17, 18, got one more verse out there, we'll be done. Verse 17 and verse 18 in 1 Timothy chapter number 6. Verse number 17 and verse number 18. When y'all give us say amen. amen. The Bible said, charge them that are rich in his what? Word. That they be not hot minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in what? Living God. I'm going to stop there. <coughs> he said, don't trust in uncertain what? Riches. Uncertain. See? The Bible says, certain you brought that to the world. He said, you brought that to the world, but be certain you can't have what? But now you should have some knowledge about being rich. He said, don't trust in uncertain what? Riches. Do you know you have some money today, tomorrow you'll be broke? Uncertain. I told the church enough. Do you know that you get some type of disease and you have to take all your money to, to the doctors to get healed? Uncertain. Do you know that if you lose your job, you lose your health, that, 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 that you come in America and crash and you be broke? Uncertain. In my name, certain y'all, the Bible calls it uncertain riches. Amen. So why would you want to trust in something that's not certain? Why would you have put your faith in something that's not 
uncertain. He said, don't trust in an uncertain riches. Amen. Now, when the rich people broke today, our eyes are broke. I got a witness. A lot of NBA players broke, Jordan, as much as in the NBA. A lot of football players, Terrell Owens, broke. I keep making names on the names and I go to these websites and I see all these people that used to have a lot of money and now they're dead broke. I'm going to tell you why. Got that trust in in uncertain riches. Now they went from rags to riches, from riches to rags. They went from the bottom to the top. Now they're back at the bottom. I'm going to tell you why. They were trusting in uncertain riches. Amen. Amen. I went from having nothing to having a little something to back having nothing. You know why? Because I trust, trust the uncertain reason. See? I'm all the way down. Some of y'all test like some of y'all have a little something. And God brought you all the way down to them. You skip, skip the day, but man. You, you have a little something to take the day. The Bible says, high minded. Right. He said, charge them out rich, and they be not what? Uh -huh. High minded. You know the apple that got money, they think better than everybody else. Amen. They, they look at you differently. They put their nose down on you. Mm -hmm. They went got a nicer house, nicer car, got better jobs here. They look at you like you, like you know about it. You ain't got all that. They high minded. And God said, I'm trying to tell you, don't be like that. Don't trust in uncertain riches, y'all. Right. Yeah. But let me say in verse 17. Charge them down riches in this world, that they trust not in uncertain what? Riches. riches. But in the living what? Give, who, who give us all, risk all things to what? We got a lot of people out trusting in the, the money instead of the God that gave the money. Right. The verse 8, he said, but to trust the living God who given us risk all things to what? Enjoy. So some people are trusting the money more they trust the God that gave the money. Some people put the God, the money as their God instead of putting God as their God that gave them the money. God will be like, Amen. Well, y'all know people are going to keep this tonight. I'm telling you, you'll you remember the message, Lord. You'll go be about 10 years from now. You'll remember the message real well. How you got this something and God brought you all the way down. Huh? Yeah, you about, hey, don't trust no money, y'all. I'm trying to help y'all today. Don't do it. I've seen it. I, and God got me. I'm a testimony that I had a high mind and I was tossing uncertain riches and I went dead broke. I went dead broke. I got a privilege of doing what I had. This a man that had all kinds of shoes and everything, all kinds of clothes, money. I get out of prison, I had one pair of shoes, two pair of jeans, and two pair of t-shirts with one old jacket. When I left one of the scars, I had $30 in my pocket. Right. Then it broke. What happened? I trusted an answer. Riches. I was hot man, and God brought me down to absolutely nothing. Right. And what I'm telling you tonight, I experienced y'all. <laughs> hey, I experienced the judgment of God. I experienced a man who trusted us on riches. I seen the Bible they have, the money have a wing like a bird. The Bible says labor not to be what? So why should we decide they want to be rich in life? So I take care of my family. Work there in the Bible. God said labor not to be what? Rich. So why should we want to get rich there? Well, Pastor, if I get rich, I can go to church. Pastor, if I get rich, I have my family out. But the Bible said, you don't labor to get rich. You labor to provide for your family. Labor not to get rich. So why are people labor to get rich? Right. If you get rich, that's a hand of God. But if really you work, you don't work to get rich. If you work like God made you to work, so you provide for your family. How many times can you labor to get rich? That money will become your God. Amen. I got a question for you tonight. You struggle with faith tonight? I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to Can I be real with y'all? He says, I'm like, I don't know who's going to be here tonight. I got to be more than here tonight. So, you know, I don't say, well, Pastor, talk about us. When I prepare a message, God going to tell me who's going to be here and who's not going to be here. <laughs> yeah, right? Listen, God will tell me who's here or not, right? Amen. I'm going to show our question. If you struggle with time, you're going you to be faithful. If you struggle with paying time, if that's a struggle to you, then give God 10% of what belongs to Him. I'm not a 10%. If I got $1,000, $100 in an offer and go straight to God. So if you struggle with tithes, you're going to get involved in mission. Mission is above your tithes. 
Y'all about to speak up. If you struggle with paying your tithes, you're not going to be heaven all in business. Amen. That's what they all struggle with tithing. If you don't get God to the same income, you're going to be fit to mission. Right. You're going to do it, y'all. I'm trying to help you tonight. Now, look at your hand and don't show me the devil. Everybody in heaven involved in mission, they, they give faith to the tithes and offer. Because why? Tithes and offers to support, I mean, missions to support what? Missionaries. Tithes and offers to support your own church. So tithes and offers, when I get the tithes and offers, is to take care of this church. When I get to missions, it's to help other churches. Right. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So you can't take care of other churches if you can take care of home. Right. It's all about I'm going to go help somebody to pay any bills, but my lifestyle. That don't make sense. We're in the dark, I'm going to go help somebody with their light bill. I'm going to have to go fix my other room, but I'm not, I ain't going to pay my own, and I'm going to get kicked out. Right. It, don't, it, don't, it don't make sense. So if you don't pay tithes and offers, hey, fool, you ain't going to get involved with mission. I never say that part. What is your faith tonight? Are you willing to trust God to find this? Are you struggling in faith tonight? Some of y'all don't thank God. I'm never going to leave Some people don't thank God and bless you. Mm -hmm. That God broke us. Some people, most of them think God is dead. That he don't have no money. That God is bankrupt. Some Christians think that I, I can't trust God my father because he, he ain't gonna do a good job. He's the best, he can he, he's the, he's the best accountant. He can take care of your finances if you let him take care of it. Right. Amen. So you said, Pastor, what you're saying? What I'm saying is this. A lack of faith will hinder us from being fully involved with what? When you have a lack of faith. And that, and, and, that, and them doubts come out all over my mind. If I pay my tithes and offering and I give to mission on top of that, how am I going to The devil said, how you going to make it? You pay your tithes and offering and get to mission. How you going to pay your bills? Right. Somebody took one day. Now I got bills to pay. I said, well, you got your tithes to pay for you. Mm -hmm. She said, no, no, first, I got one in tonight. Right. But I, got, I got bills to pay. Well, God first, but seek ye first uh, the kingdom of God and uh, all his righteousness. Uh, I mean, his righteousness and uh, all these things uh, will be added to you. Amen. Y'all look at So most of the, the reason why they talk like that, I ain't, I ain't mad about they talk like that. I know I can be struggling with tithing offer. I know I can be struggling with missions because they have a lack of faith. They don't trust God. They don't trust God. They don't think God can take care of them. Last verse, I'll be done. Go to Satan chapter 5. Yeah, that might be a struggle with this stuff. And, 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 and so I might know. A lack of faith will hinder you. Yeah. A lack of faith will hinder you from fully being involved in one mission. I went to, man, I, I went to some churches, man, they would never talk about this whole thing of mission like this. Right. They never taught us something like this. So I didn't have a good concept of missions at first. But I'm here to tell you, a lack of faith will hinder any believer, any Christian, from fully getting involved in what? Mission. Let's go to Satan chapter 5. When y'all get us, amen. Amen. When we don't need verse 1, let's just go. Satan chapter number 5, and starting at verse number, what I got in verse number 3. In Luke chapter number five, five and verse number three, y'all just say amen. amen. The Bible says, when he entered into one of the ships who was Simon's, he prayed him that he would thrust out a little far from the what? And he sat down and talked to people out of the ship. And now we had left speaking, he said to Simon, run out to the deep and let down your what? Amen. For a drop. And Simon answered, said to him, Master, we have told all the night to have taken what? Nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the what? Net. God didn't tell him to let down the net. God told him to let down the nets. You see that? So instead of Peter uh, cast all his nets, he don't let down what? One. One. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. And look about the verse 6. And when they had done this thing, how, when, when they had done, had this done, they had closed a great mother to of fishes in their net. What? Great. They never would never break the gap put nets down there. Mm -hmm. So now because they was not have a lack of faith, now they never broke. Because, why? Because they did not have a net down, but they had a net down. Amen. And look at the Bible said, y'all, in verse number seven. 
And the Bible says they beckoned into their partners who were in the other ship that they should come and what? They came. Help them. And they came and filled both the ships so that they began to what? Sink. Sink. I'm going to go over here when we're done. The Bible says, verse 4, and we have left speaking, and he said to them, to Simon, lunch out to the what? And let down your next way, what? I'm telling God wanted Peter to do it. God wanted Peter to step out of faith. That's what God wants out to do. That's what God wants you to do. God wants me to step out in the deep. And when you step out in the deep, you know what happened? It's going to look like you're going to drown. But like, how do we make it? Pastor told me, if, if, if we trust God, we ain't going to sink. And listen, it'll seem like you're about to drown when you start stepping out on faith on your finances. It seems like you ain't going to start going wrong. It seems like you ain't going make it. It seems like you ain't going to pay your bills. It seems like you ain't going to be hard. Why? Peter, God told Peter, Jesus, Peter, go out to the what? Deep. When you go out to the deep, guess who you got to trust? God. <laughs> if you stay on the seashore, you got to trust God. Because you need there's no water on the shore. When you go out there, that machine, you're going to go out to the deep. Guess what you got to do? You got to trust God. And Jesus was trying to get people to trust God by going to the what? Deep. deep. I got a question for you. Are you willing to step out on faith now? By faith. To give to mission. By faith. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. Let's just play some music. It's all about faith. It's all about faith. And Jesus told Peter to go into the what? Deep. deep. But Peter said, him put out a net. She put out a net. He missed all his blessings. Amen. Think about that. Three or four or five nets instead of one. He catch more fish with five nets than he came with one net. Right. So, yes, he had a, a net full of fishes, but God could give him more if you were to step out of what? Okay. And God knew you the more you step out of faith. But you got to be willing to go out to the deep. Amen. You got to go out there and say, God, you told me to come out here with you. And God, you got the control of the waters. You got control of the storm. And God, I'm going to trust you. You never let me down, Lord. You say you'll never leave me nor forsake me, Lord. You say, no, you'll provide my every need, Lord. You say the word, Lord. But my God, to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. What? Christ Jesus. You'll be like David said, I've been young and now I'm old. I've never seen a brother forsaken. Nor his sheep begging what? Bringing. You'll begin to see that God. God can take care of you. That God take care of the fire of the earth. And they tore not. He said, but you have the fathers. Feed is dim. He said, are you not much more than they? If God feeds the birds, I believe God to feed you. If God calls the birds, I believe that God to close you. I believe that we have a big God. He's able to be do a ceiling. A body above all. And we ask Church, we could not believe what we're seeing. 